You are listening to a recording from the 2021 Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair. We would like to take a moment to thank the residency programs who have taken the time to present at our fair this year. This year's Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by Pumanar Recap, the best resource for your physiatry clinical preparation, audition rotations, board preparation, and beyond. Pumanar Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and even oral board cases. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. And let me just put it in presentation format. Um, so my name is Hiroki. I'm one of the PGY-5s, actually. I'm actually doing my pain fellowship this year. Uh, it's actually under anesthesia, but I did my PMNR residency at Upstate. I was the chief resident last year. Um, and so um, I volunteered to do this kind of uh, program highlights to just kind of get everyone to understand kind of what Upstate has to offer um, and, you know, kind of leave the choice to you guys. Um, um, so first off, um, I do want to introduce, there's two other people that are in here with me. Um, it's Stalin Linda and Megan Klawan. Uh, I don't know if you guys can just uh, say hi to everyone, uh, but they are the chief residents this year. Hi everyone, I'm Megan. Hi, I'm Dallin. Um, and there, uh, the chief resident email is pmnrupstate at gmail.com. So if you have any questions, um, you know, you can always email them. Um, you can always email the program as well. Um, and my email actually is kngh at upstate. Um, so I should have probably have put that in. Um, so first of all, um, you know, I hope you interview you with us, um, you know, and if not, you know, I understand, uh, hopefully we'll meet you at a later conference, like an AAPMNR, uh, and I do hope that the application process is going well. Um, it wasn't that long ago when kind of all of us were in your shoes, um, and so we kind of understand the whole anxiety process, and uh, I, I understand it again when you go through the whole, uh, for me, when I went applied through pain as well. Uh, and then just recently, actually, when I went again through the boards, part one, uh, I actually, by the way, used PMNR Recap. Uh, I didn't get any discounts or anything, but I actually thought it was a great resource. So um, so it was kind of interesting that they're supporting uh, PMNR scholars, which is great. Um, but I mean, I think, I think my first tip is to just kind of take a breather. Um, I'm sure you guys are going to match um, and, um, you know, um, I'm sure you guys have a lot to offer and it's gonna, it's gonna be, and the, I think the most important thing is that you guys have chosen like a good field. PMNR is a great field, it's very flexible and the job market is great uh, for PMNR. So, um, so, you know, why Upstate, right? So I wanted to kind of hit you with kind of the big reason why you should pick Upstate over other, other, um, uh, other programs. And I think the big thing is that, you know, we're a big, uh, we're the only, uh, uh, academic medical center in central New York. Um, Upstate is the region's largest employer uh, with about 9,000 employees. Um, there's about 50 beds between the downtown campus and the community campus. Uh, right now, unfortunately, due to nursing shortages, the community campus rehab, um, you know, is temporarily closed right now. Uh, but on the other side, our subacute rehab, uh, program over at St. Camillus, which is actually at a nursing facility, is expanding. So um, there's, you know, where there is, you know, one door closes, there is, there is another one that's open. I think someone's mic is on. I don't know. Um, I don't, th I don't think that's me, right? Um, okay. Um, you know, I, I think the other thing too to keep in mind when you look at hospitals is a lot of hospital services uh, require PMNR uh, services actually for accreditation. So there's like the uh, comprehensive trauma service. There's, there is like the comprehensive cancer programs. There's like the HA uh, stroke programs. And so what that means is that if a hospital is designated that, it actually requires PMNR to be consulted because um, that's how they get their certification, right? And so if you're looking at PMNR programs, um, you know, you know, upstate is a level one trauma, right? So you're going to see all the traumas. Um, it's a comprehensive stroke center. So you're going to see all the, uh, all the strokes, right? And so um, that's just something to keep in mind. We also have one of the VA spinal cord injury centers, which I believe is one of seven in the nation. And I think the VA um, actually adds a big component to PMNR. 
Um, and so in that you, you get kind of get to see a different aspect of care. And then you also get to work with kind of the VA system. Um, we also have uh, electives, about five months electives that you can choose on your own. Um, you know, because there is a pain program at Upstate, uh, it's an ACGME accredited pain program under anesthesia, usually about one uh, uh, PMNR resident actually uh, matches in there. This year, actually, they took uh, a bunch of us. Um, you know, it, it's kind of nice to kind of rotate through that pain. And, you know, you know, it's almost like, you know, even if you don't, uh, you know, stay here at Upstate for the pain fellowship, um, you, you, you know, you, you, you get a nice, like, recommendation letter out of that. Um, there's also spinal cord injury fellowship that just started a couple of years ago. Uh, and so there's opportunities there as well. Um, and then uh, there's home call. Uh, I for, almost forgot to mention that, which is a common in quite a lot of PMR programs, although I think a few of them actually do in-house call, um, but you know, uh, at Upstate it's, it's, it's home call. So if you're able to answer from, the, from, from your phone at home, then uh, then you're good. Otherwise, you know, you can go in and usually a call is about one to uh, once every uh, four weeks. So you basically have three golden weekends. I think for, a, I think for uh, medical students, um, uh, you appreciate that more when you're uh, in, in your intern year and you're kind of on call like every other weekend. Okay. Um, so this uh, uh, photo is a couple years older, uh, mainly because COVID and we haven't been able to take an updated photo, um, but this is us, uh, uh, well, a couple years ago, and a bunch of them have graduated and moved on to bigger and better things. Uh, there's about 24 residents uh, in the program, six that do a preliminary medicine year. Uh, the medicine year at Upstate is, um, it's actually, it, I actually think um, it's a pretty good program. There's about, I think, 60, 70 residents, so it's a big program, and what that means is that it allows um, a lot of like specialization, right? So there's like a, mis a mitting team, there's like a code team, um, you know, and, and, and so it allows, um, you know, there's console services and, and you get like, it's by week actually. And so you, um, you can rotate through different specialties. And I think um, once you get the hang of it, actually they do, they do a pretty good job. Um, I mean, there's always that bias of like, oh, they always treat the categories better um, than the prelim. And so there's always a back and forth that way. But I think overall, uh, it's a pretty decent program. And I think it's, it's you know, I think uh, I go back to the whole size of programs really matters because uh, in, in the real world, uh, you know, a lot of programs are run by residents. And so um, if you have more residents, it's kind of nice because it divvies up the work a little bit better. Um, so, uh, okay. So we're located in Syracuse, New York. Um, uh, you know, uh, it's in the central New York region. Uh, it's about a medium-sized city, about 142 in the city, about 600,000 in the metro area. Um, there's a few suburbs surrounding Syracuse, and then um, it's a bit rural outside of that. Um, it's about equal distance to like Montreal, Toronto, New York City, Boston, about four hours to each of those cities. Um, so it's kind of nice to have that. We also do have an airport. Um, that, you know, goes to um, New York City, um, Boston, Chicago, uh, Atlanta, and Florida. And so um, there is kind of, uh, you know, things to do in this area. Um, living cost, I just took a screenshot of Zillow. Uh, living cost in Syracuse is pretty affordable. Um, everything is about 10 to 15 minutes away. Um, you know, there's residents, uh, I mean, you know, I, you know, I was able to buy a house on a resident salary. A lot of uh, the other residents uh, are able to do that as well. Um, I actually have kids, so it's kind of nice that I can actually buy a house with a yard in the backyard so they can kind of run around um, and kind of release the energy that way. And so, um, I mean, you know, um, if, if you, I mean, if, you're, if your heart is set on like a major city and you kind of want that nightlife, like, you know, uh, maybe Syracuse is not the best place for you, but if you want like a medium-sized city where things are, you know, easy to uh, get to, like everything's 10 to 15 minutes away, uh, and you want affordable housing uh, and a decent quality of life, then, you know, I would suggest looking at a medium to small size city, uh, which, you know, uh, which I wanted for, for me and my family. Uh, things to do. Um, so there are a lot of things to do in Syracuse uh, uh, relatively to kind of what the size of the city is. Um, I actually think uh, there is a lot of uh, great things to do outside the city as well. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of apple picking, there's blueberry picking, there's strawberry picking, 
Um, there's a lot of freshwater lakes actually nearby. Um, uh, the, the Finger Lakes, I don't know if you guys ever heard of those, but um, so there, you know, you, you can rent boats, you can, uh, you know, kind of go camping on the, on the, on the river or on the lake. Uh, and it's, it's pretty amazing, actually. Uh, there's a lot of summer festivals. I just recently went to the fair, uh, the New York State Fair is here, um, and there's concerts and free, uh, and, and free stuff that, that you can do. Um, there's also your local like breweries and bars. There's the whole gastropub scene here where, um, you know, or like working barns slash breweries uh, where you can kind of enjoy the outdoors a little bit and maybe even an outdoor uh, live concert. Um, and because we're kind of in the Northern hemisphere, there's a lot of snow. Um, and, uh, you know, that's something to keep in mind if you're you know traveling kind of above uh, the Mason-Dixon line. And so, um, you know, I actually got a, a ski pass, season pass for my family uh, this coming year. I think it was like $800 for the four of us. And uh, it's, it's for a mountain. Song Mountain's like 30 minutes away. And so that's great because that means, you know, Friday I can go or Saturday I can go uh, with my entire family. And, you know, we, and it's, it's, it's not that much of a, much of a haul. Uh, and then SU, which is uh, the local university around here, has a lot of basketball games and football games that are pretty popular. Uh, they just renovated the, the Carrier Dome, and so uh, it's much nicer now. Uh, so history of the program. Um, so it's 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 an older program. It started with about I think four faculty members uh, in 1989, um, and then. Uh, not long after that, they established the Regional Spinal Cord Injury Center at the VA, uh, which is kind of nice because it actually covers the entire, uh, um, you know, area from basically to like um, Albany to Buffalo. Um, and so you'll see kind of people will travel hours to get to kind of the VA. And so you get to see a wide variety. Um, you get to see uh, like a, it's a good uh, it's a good mix of patient populations as well. Um, I think the number of faculty now is about 20. Um, I think, you know, then there's uh, a lot of them are board certified in PEDS, brain injury, uh, spinal cord injury, uh, pain, uh, and then uh, EMG as well, um, which, um, you know, which, which is pretty neat. Um, half the female, uh, half the, sorry, half the faculty are female. Um, so I think that's another thing to keep in mind that the program is, you know, kind of looking at that as well. So you do kind of get a mixture of, of that, um, and I think it's I think it's really good. I think it's it's kind of um, you know uh, you know progressive in that way. Um, uh, residency rotations uh, about uh, half your rotations are inpatient and half your rotations are outpatient. Um, this is kind of where the job market is right now. Um, you know, actually, even the inpatient jobs, you actually have to do some outpatient, at least from what I hear from the recent graduates. Um, or you can do straight outpatient, you know, you know, usually it's outpatient EMGs or outpatient MSK or outpatient pain is, is kind of the main ones. Um, and, and then um, some, some people recently have been getting jobs uh, doing outpatient, but in like a subacute or a skilled nursing facility. Um, um, that you'll be rotating in. A, a lot of residency programs actually don't have that rotation, which is kind of interesting because you kind of get to see um, care from a different aspect. And it's and there's actually a lot of job uh, op opportunities for subacute rehab in a skilled nursing facility that's coming up um, as well. Um, and there's five months of elective, which is which is kind of nice. Sorry about that. I don't know if you can hear my kids running. They're uh, <laughs> I think they're racing through the house right now. Uh, so there's a few rotation sites that we have. We have a huge referral base because we're basically, um, you know, the, the biggest hospital in the area. Um, we have the Upstate Hospital, which is downtown. That's our main building. That's kind of on your, uh, it's kind of it's a small shot. It's uh, uh, on the top right. Um, there's a bone and joint at Fly Road. This is actually kind of ortho center. And so that's where, uh, Ortho runs mainly their ambulatory surgery center upstairs, uh, and then they do their procedures there as well. Um, and then we have uh, uh, some space there. Pain has a space there. Neurology has a space there. Hangar for their orthotics has a space there. Um, and then um, our concussion clinics for our brain injury patients are actually at the Institute of Human Performance, which is actually a pretty cool building. Um, they have like an indoor track. They have like a pool that actually uh, adjusts in height. I've never seen that before. That was pretty cool. Um, and then we also have a regional hospital upstate at Community General um, that upstate bought, I think about five years ago. And so that's where our inpatient rehab unit is 
uh, which right now is temporarily closed. Um, uh, we also have a brain injury unit at St. Camillus. Um, they actually, New York State actually allows like a, what the brain injury waiver. And so um, it allows uh, for subacute rehab facilities to kind of maintain a separate brain injury. Uh, and I just realized I spelled that wrong. It's not Brian, it's brain. Uh, apologize for that. Um, uh, that's another thing to keep in mind. Different states have different, you know, uh, waivers and different requirements and stuff. And that kind of adjusts how uh, PM&R basically gets paid. Um, at Township 5, which is kind of located next to our uh, primary care uh, uh, providers, uh, there's also our MSK outpatient there. And that they just built that in the last year. And so we're trying to look, look into expanding that as well. Uh, I think I think Payne is going to try to split between the ortho and uh, family medicine. That's uh, usually where a lot of referrals uh, come from for pain. I don't know. Hopefully, everyone can hear me. Um, well, okay. Uh, program perks. Uh, this is probably similar to a lot of places. Uh, we have health insurance. Uh, like I said, our cost of living is pretty low. Um, there's a lot of vacation flexibility as long as you kind of arrange it in advance. Uh, and usually, you try to arrange that with the chief residents. Um, usually, there's two a year. Uh, that's responsible for kind of managing the schedule there. Um, there's meal support at the VA. So if you uh, are on call and you come in on the weekends, then you get like a meal voucher, which is pretty, pretty neat. There's a daycare at Upstate. Um, it's open, I think, from like 7.30 to like 6, I think. So it's pretty, it's pretty nice, actually. Um, I think when our kids were in daycare, we, we did it through SU and it's only open to like 5.15, which is like tight if you, you know, if you work uh, and then now I think, I think um, they mandated, I think ACG mandated maternity leave, but before that the program was, was pretty supportive and, um, and, 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 and supporting, you know, uh, uh, you know, the residents that wanted to take maternity leave. Um, there's a lot of learning opportunities at Upstate. Um, there's a SIM center that the medicine uses that's more for like CPR, that kind of stuff. Uh, but we also have um, a few different uh, uh, machines that you can use. Um, this is actually at the VA. The VA, um, I don't know if you've ever been to the VA, but the VA at the Spinal Cord Injury Center, um, the Spinal Cord Injury Center at the VA, it's completely different than any other kind of VA unit in that it has a lot of money <laughs> because there's a, their own lobbying. Uh, 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 I think it's Paralyzed Veterans of America. And so uh, they actually have the, the top of the line equipment. So that's like, I think that's like a $40,000 like ultrasound machine. And so um, uh, last year, um, this, you know, there were, uh, we were doing some uh, ultrasound on each other. Um, and I think this is actually like a pig's knee or foot maybe uh, that we're trying to just uh, get some, um, uh, just practicing our ultrasound skills. Um, a lot of times with ultrasound, you actually, um, it's hard to see the tip of the needle because, you know, with the ultrasound, especially if it's linear probe, um, you know, a slight angle adjustment and you kind of miss it. And so, um, you know, it's actually, it's, it's really good that we have these workshops that can kind of prepare us to do that. Um, and it's actually kind of hard, tricky to hold an ultrasound because it's basically on this like ultrasound gel, which is basically loo. And so it's like slipping. And so you're like, you're really trying to find the spot and then you put it in um, the, you know, the, the correct about, let's say a burst or whatever, and then you put the fluid in and you should see it expand. And a lot of times some, some people go by that, but really you should see the exact tip of the needle because that's where you want to be. And a lot of times, you, you know, the efficacy is, is, is much improved if you do that. And so it's good that we have that. Um, we also do workshops for EMG. Um, EMG is actually um, pretty important in trying to figure out like cause for like nerve damage. Um, we use it a lot. Actually, uh, neuro, neurology, uh, neurosurgery really likes it because they want to figure out like radiculopathy and, and basically where they need to do the, the fusion. And so um, that's that's pretty neat. And we have a pretty good program there. Dr. Dunn and Dr. Hur does a really good job of teaching you um, and you'll get all your required EMGs. Although during COVID, it was a little bit challenged because we had to kind of cut back on that. There's a cadaver anatomy lab uh, with the medical about students. Five minutes left. Oh, crap. Okay, thanks. Uh, and then the prosthetic lab, um, I'm going to speed up. Um, it's pretty neat in that the VA actually, you can actually make your own prosthetics. So you, I made my own uh, AFO there. Uh, okay, and we're actually close to being done. So this is some of us. Uh, we do get out and have fun. Uh, I think a couple of these were before COVID, so you don't see the masks. Uh, and then a couple of, and then ones after COVID. Um, so we do try to have fun. And I think that's it. Any questions? This is kind of open.
Well, uh, I do want to say good luck for you guys. Um, you know, I, I know it's a very stressful process and, um, you know, I'm, hopefully I get to see you guys on the interview trail or in the future. Um, but, uh, best of luck. Dr. Kang, looks like we have two questions, oh, one two questions. or three now. Um, yeah, opportunity. what opportunities are there to explore pediatric rehab outside of your required rotations? Um, another student asks, what made you rank Upstate so highly? Um, those are the questions we have in the chat. Yeah, so, um, so I mean, so, so, so I guess the first question is, there, there are many opportunities to explore pediatric rehab. We have actually, so um, our uh, vice chair, Dr. Turk, um, was one of the first ones to actually get a pediatric fellowship trained. Um, and so um, we, uh, and so there's, so she's pretty well connected I, uh, uh, with, 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 with the pediatrics. So I'm sure she'll be able to connect anyone who's interested in pediatric rehab. If your heart set is um, on pediatric rehab, I think there's a lot of programs that actually have a combined one. So I think in all fairness, that's some things you guys should look into. Um, and there's five months of electives. And so uh, if you guys, if you want to take, if you want to do pediatric rehab, there is no, there is no limit to, 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 uh, to what you want to do with that, with those five months. Um, what made me rank Upstate highly, um, to be honest, I, I went to med school here and I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a pretty down to earth program. Um, I'm not a really competitive person, to be honest. Um, I get kind of nervous. Uh, uh, and so um, I just wanted kind of like a friendly environment that's pretty down to earth and people are supportive here. And um, it's pretty easy living in Syracuse, to be honest. I mean, it does get cold for a lot of the a few of the months, um, more than I think some people like it, but I, it's, it doesn't bother me at all. 